awesome to be here and uh, see everyone. My parents still have no idea what I do, but I feel like if I get a good photo of me here, they will finally be proud of me. Um, so um, I guess quick agenda, I'm gonna give a bit about my journey as a founder, uh, a little bit of like practical entrepreneurship advice, and then gonna tell you about our new company, Bordy. Um, and if we have time, we're gonna get Jason to come back up and do a quick demo. So quick trip down memory lane, that's me when I was 20. Uh, I grew up in Vancouver, I went to Ivy. I remember getting there, I don't know if anyone in the crowd went there also, but I remember getting there and like the big thing that they grill into your head is getting a good internship that summer. And like the best thing you can do is get an investment banking internship. I had no idea what that was. McKinsey was recruiting the first week of school. I thought that was probably like an Irish pub at the time. Um, but I was always passionate about tech and entrepreneurship, and I was lucky enough to get an internship, as Alex was saying, at a company called ClearBank. Um, at the time, we were doing Uber and Airbnb financing, and they basically hired me as one of the first interns. I spent like, I don't know, 15 hours a day the whole summer calling Uber drivers, trying to give them a payday loan. Terrible business model, but I like really hustled that summer. I focused on my relationship with the founders. And uh, towards the end of the summer, we pivoted to an e-commerce model, which you guys are probably more familiar with for our business. Um, this is the photo uh, at Cabana Pool Bar, where Andrew convinced me to drop out of Ivy um, with a large coconut at his, in his hand. Um, and I haven't been back to Cabana since, thank God. Um, but uh, it ended up being the best decision I ever made. And uh, I was too scared to tell my parents that I was dropping out of Ivy. Um, so I didn't for six months, and I basically crashed on Andrew's couch. Um, you guys probably are somewhat familiar with the story from there. Uh, you know, over the next six years of my time there, we went from probably 10 people to 700. Uh, you know, we passed 125 million of revenue. Uh, we had the most capital intensive business of all time, so we ended up having to raise a ton. And I originally started in a chief of staff role being right hand to Andrew Michelle. Uh, and then I kind of moved into a corp dev role where I spend most of my time raising capital. I think we raised like $500 million of equity and about a billion and a half of debt. Um, so it was, yeah, it was very capital intensive. Um, and as you guys know, like post COVID, it, it wasn't as, uh, as, as stargazed as, um, you know, it was in the beginning. And I think about my time there and obviously like an incredible amount of fun and a lot of stories to share from the way up, but definitely on the way down, I like an unbelievable amount of learning that I'm, I'm pretty grateful for. Um, it's funny, like I spent most of my time raising capital and you know, we're a Canadian business, but we had a bunch of US investors um, and I just started to build this amazing investor network in the US. And um, this is like peak 2021, 2022, people were getting secondary, they were cashing out, they were leaving to go start their own companies. And Canadians are like unbelievable entrepreneurs and good on you guys for being here. Cause like, this is kind of the start of it. Um, but I think when it comes to like, you know, raising capital. We are a, a, a relatively new nation. I know our, our parents don't have hedge funds in Greenwich or, uh, you know, run venture capital firms in the Bay. And some people just need a little bit of support. Um, and that's, that's basically what I did. So while I was at ClearCo, I started a fund called Boone. And the whole idea was basically just to like be a founder's best friend um, and be just like an authentic thought partner for them to go and, um, you know, figure out how to do zero to one and, and go and raise capital. And a lot of our investors are based in the US. So the whole model is like find great people, write them a check and then go and help them, you know, syndicate that to the US. Uh, so we've done a bunch of great deals. We've invested in Martin at Passage, who you will hear from later. He is one of the best entrepreneurs I've ever met, um, and I'm lucky to, to share a stage with him. Uh, and then I've done a bunch of personal investing and advisory stuff. And I guess the reason I put this slide up, not as like an accolade, but I'm just like a regular guy. You know, I was a camp counselor working at a grocery store before I got into tech. Um, and if I can do it, basically anyone can do it. Thank you. I guess some, some practical advice that I think about when I do coffee chats and I think about like the last six years um, in tech. The first one is like, no one really has any idea what's going on, so you kind of just need to fake it till you make it. I remember my very first day of work, Andrew asked me if I wanted to go to New York to a conference. I had never been to New York before. I showed up to the airport wearing a suit, which is what Ivy taught me. Andrew was wearing a ripped t-shirt, ripped sweatpants, looking like Swedish House Mafia, and he told me to go home, change, and catch the next flight. Um, and I had a panic attack at the conference a couple hours later, so no one really has any idea what's going on, but just like taking the leap is the first step and you will figure it out uh, as you go. The next is like be the best friend. Um, I think if you have incredible accolades and you're the smartest person in the room and you can get that McKinsey internship, that's great. That was never me. Um, and I've always had to kind of focus on being personable and cultivating relationships, so that's been my strong suit. And ultimately that was like the thing I did to, to you know, get my, my job at ClearCo. 
Um, the next is make decisions early in your career to prioritize your learning and building a network. Like I had a million people tell me dropping out was a terrible idea. Um, and I really focused on these two vectors. I also like the other advice I give is just like the chief of staff role is amazing for this. It gives you latitude across the whole organization. Everyone knows you within the company. You can also be like a stunt double for the founder externally um, and just gives you like a super wide breadth of experience and, uh, and learning. And then the last is just like do it now. Like I don't know, people in the crowd, you're either students or looking to break into tech or start a company, but um, there's never been a better time. The shift uh, to AI that's coming is like going to be bigger than the internet itself. Um, and if you don't know how to do anything, you can just look it up on ChatGPT, which is what I do every day. Um, so like now is the time to go and do it. Um, and that brings me today to Bordy, um, which I'm excited to talk to you guys about. So I started this company. Uh, it's myself, Andrew, the guy to the right in the photo who is uh, my boss and now my co-founder and this other guy, Shan. And all of us have been best friends since our time at ClearCo. Uh, and I don't really recommend starting a company with your best friends. Um, but for us, it's kind of working out so far. Um, and the whole idea is like all of us had pretty similar skill sets. Uh, we have all gotten to, I think, where we are today in our careers by focusing on our network and just figuring out how to cultivate uh, our network. And we spend a lot of time introducing people and trying to be helpful. And we had some early projects uh, on AI at ClearCo. And we spent a bunch of time thinking about, like, what does networking look like in this next era of AI? Um, so I want to pose the questions to you guys. So which intro are you more likely to take? Option A is, you know, I creep this person's LinkedIn and Twitter for an hour. I think you'd really get along with them. Can I intro you? Option B is, hey, you know, I was at this TechTO event. I spent 10 minutes talking to this person. I think you'd like them. Can I intro you? Hands up for option A. Hands up for option B. That's right. That's all what you were supposed to do. Uh, that's kind of the thesis for the company we're building. Only in the last six months can you basically have a conversation with an AI which is indistinguishable from a human. And the idea is that we basically can go build the most well-connected person um, of all time. So what does Bordy do today? Bordy is basically an AI avatar. I will, you can look up our website or I'll, I should have put it up here, but you can basically just call Bordy and we'll do a demo in a second. And just like we kind of did in this open forum right now, tell Bordy about yourself, tell him what you're working on and Bordy basically will go and use that data to connect you to amazing people. Um, this is actually a screenshot of Bordy's calendar a couple weeks ago. Think about you as a human, right? You are only able to manage 150 relationships. If you are an AI, you can have 300 calls a day. You remember that scene in Her when Joaquin Phoenix is like pissed because Scarlett Johansson AI is like talking to 10,000 people at the same time? It's kind of Bordy. Um, and like Bordy will remember everything everyone says uh, they can manage way more than 150 relationships, which, you know, a human is. And, you know, Alex, maybe you relate to this as a VC. When people ask me for help, I go back to, like, the same 50 people at the top of my head every single time. I intro them to you. I intro them to Jason, you know, Alex McIsaac. It's the same thing. But Bordy has, like, way better data. And through a conversation, you can get way richer data um, to match. So our end goal is, like, you know, we all talk about brownie points or this person owes me a favor. Bordy's job is basically to just maximize his goodwill with people by being incredibly helpful. And if we think we can go do that on a mass scale, then there's a really interesting network to build. You know, the one comparison we sometimes use is LinkedIn. LinkedIn has had to go and monetize through being a social network, right? They, like, you just post stuff. You get engagement. They sell ads against it. The, the value of the network is not actually based on the connections they're making. Um, but I think this technology shift serves as a, a pretty cool way to actually go and build something that's maybe more valuable than that. So, um, yeah, that's the company we're up to. I don't know how we're doing for time, but I'd love to get Jason up to do a quick demo. Cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, you have a mic. Oh, yeah. Great. Also, does, does Bordy join the daily stand-up? At 9.30 a.m.? Sometimes. Okay, very nice. Uh, okay, so what should I do? Call Bordy and just put on speaker. Here we go. Hey, Jason. Aren't you supposed to be enjoying the Tech TO rocket ships event right now? No way. <laughs> How does Bordy know that? Uh, hey, Bordy, I'm at the event. Hi, Jason. It's great to be here, and I'm incredibly grateful for being nominated as a Tech TO rocket ship. How's the audience feeling today? Uh, how are you guys feeling today? Woo! Yeah, we love you, Bordy. We love you, Bordy. 
Thank you, Jason, and thank you to the audience. So how can I support you today, Jason? What's the most pressing challenge on your mind right now? Uh, okay, Bordy, so I'm here at TechTO, and we've got about 200 entrepreneurs uh, here at the event, but next year at Rocket Ships, I want to double it. I want 400 entrepreneurs at the event. It's funny you mention that. I just spoke with someone who's an expert in scaling event attendance through innovative marketing strategies. You know, I think they'd be a perfect fit to support you. Would you like me to put you in touch? Yeah, yeah, I would. Awesome. I'll let you get back to it, but keep an eye on your inbox for that introduction shortly. Thanks again, and enjoy the rest of the event. Wow, thanks, Bordy. That's it. You're welcome, Jason. Are we doing Q&A? Yeah. How much time do we have? OK. Any questions in the audience? Yeah. Nice. It usually, it doesn't always work perfect. I'm not going to lie, that's so that's good. That's not a question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah. Honestly, I wanted Scarlett Johansson, but she's suing people that are using her voice. So like, I feel like Australian is like cool and casual. Anyone else? Yeah. OK, what's your name? I'll follow up with you. OK, I remember that. Anyone else? You can probably use this exact platform for triaging um, tickets or, or things within operations. Like, there is a lot of use cases, I think, beyond the social networking. I'm just talking from an yeah. operational standpoint in a large organization. Um, this can be used for helping employees who don't have good, uh, good ability to navigate the company to figure out who's the right person to go to fix a specific problem. So I see a lot of use cases beyond this. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of use cases. Like, honestly, we've been pitching VCs the past couple of weeks, and everyone's like, can you give me a voice tool to access the network I already have? Because um, like, we've all met thousands of people. You don't remember any of them. You don't remember what they do. I think the more interesting opportunity if we crack is like the net new connection, right? Because like, yes, you could be one employee at a company or maybe you can be the most well-connected VC, but there's like 99% of the entire world who is like, you know, putting energy into a network who maybe doesn't have a connection yet. So I think there are cool applications to do it like within smaller communities or within existing networks. But I think the aha moment you get from getting a net new connection is, is very powerful. So that's where we're focused. So I'm gonna ask the last question because yeah. I have the mic here. Um, how would you change your approach to starting your career based on already existing in AI? So how's the world changed in the last five years? Yeah, it's a good question. I feel like I had to just like lean in like crazy and hustle and I, I, I have crazy stories for the things I feel like I had to do to like get the respect and, and network that I got in my first internship. I feel like with AI, like the, just the cost to produce has never been lower, right? Like let's say you don't know how to code or you don't know how to build a website or you don't know how to be a pro marketer. All of those things are like very easy now. The reason I think Bordy is a really cool idea is like for us, the only thing that will not be commodified over the next 15 years is your relationships. So we're indexing on that being like the only thing that will be sacred eventually when you have an AI developer and an AI marketer is your network. So the idea is, is like in that meantime, can we actually build the most well-connected person of all time and like it's a little bit abstract, but like you almost solve all of sales if this works. Right? You have a perfect marketplace where you're someone who needs something and someone else has something else and you can go and connect people. So I guess if I was a young person and I was giving some advice, like part of it is just like being, uh, like I don't know, like Googling everything like I do every day on ChatGPT. But the other idea is like figuring out all these new AI tools that exist um, and um, using stuff like Bordy as a tool to get network is amazing. Obviously stuff like this is incredible, but outside of that, um, like everyone who got up today to talk about a thing they were looking for, I highly encourage you to do a Bordy call and hopefully we can help connect you to those people. So take away TechTO first, Bordy second. There you go. <laughs> can we get a round of applause for Matt?